Gallery. This is actually not my place, this is Piper's place, but uh, I'm going to talk about my place uh, first, but also generally makerspaces. So who knows what a makerspace is? Anyone? Oh wow, almost everybody. Okay, that's good. So makerspaces are defined in many different ways. Uh, tech Shop is a makerspace. We actually have two representatives from Tech Shop here today. So there's Tech Shop. Omnicorp Detroit is a hackerspace I'm proud to be a part of. Um, there are some members here. <laughs> That's uh, another place, and so on and so forth. There's many different places where people get together to make things. So that is a very raw definition of a makerspace. So you may have a makerspace in your basement, you may have one in your kitchen, you may have one in your immediate environs and not even know it. So nowadays we're calling makerspaces many different things. But what Piper and I are gonna talk about today, especially as it relates to childhood, is makerspaces that focus on youth particularly. So I'm going to talk about the organization that uh, I'm a founder of and, and deeply involved in called the Mount Elliott Makerspace. And before I describe it further, I'm going to have James, our slide man, show a video. At the Mount Elliott Makerspace, we have four areas of concentration, and they include transportation, electronics, digital media, and wearables. Besides building things, I like to fix things. Like I fix the stereo and their speakers. I use the drill, a hammer, and um, a heat gun. I think a screwdriver. Yeah, a screwdriver too. The space is, is productive and time consuming. You know what I'm saying? So while you're here, you can actually get something done, but at the same time, you're not out with the temptations of doing anything else, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're not, you, you don't actually think about you don't have any money in your pocket if you just made like, you know what I'm saying, for five songs. At the Makerspace, we facilitate learning experiences for people. So we, we want to connect people to each other, someone who may have knowledge in an area that someone does not. And likewise, we want to provide learning experiences as, I guess, facilitators or conductors of the makerspace. Didn't know nothing about the hard drive, the C drive, the disc. I mean, what makes it function with the fan, the motherboard. You know, I really got tired of spending my money out. I don't know what was wrong with my computer. And what makes it so good, though, hands on. That would make it so different. You know, touching, I'm fixing, I'm unscrewing, seeing what made it tick, how I'm putting something back together. When I came here, I mean, like I said, it really gave me something positive to stand on. Mm -hmm. I had class, but when I don't have class, I'm gonna get some money. I don't have to worry about money because the church is really helping me do my dream, like what I've been really wanting to do. You know? Yeah, it's, it's helping me build something. I wouldn't mind being part of something that's, that's stable enough for the whole community to be a part of. The Makerspace, what I really love is that it provides a safe and a healthy place for my children. It's benefited my life in the way of, I wasn't getting enough exercise until I earned my bike. Well, it's improved my life because as you can see, me and my son get to work together because he's helping me earn a bike. What we're trying to do now is to continue to develop this model of a makerspace, but also to develop a network of makerspaces. We don't want to be the only one. We want other people to be developing makerspaces in parallel with us so that we can then get together and learn from each other and develop even better and even faster. James, you can go to the slideshow. Right. This is now the fundraising portion of it. <laughs> I'm pitching to a funder. Which I'm <laughs> So the Mount Elliott Makerspace, as you saw, is a neighborhood workshop for tinkering and making things together. And at Mount Elliott, our specific intention is to build relationships 
in a geographical community through the makerspace and certainly build skills and develop talent. We do this through multiple learning experiences within multiple different concentrations. And I call them sort of multidisciplinary or anti-disciplinary learning experiences. We can just do lots of different things. So our first concentration is called transportation. And we do try to make these highly relevant to the needs of youth and people in the community. As people might know, while we do live in the Motor City, transportation is a challenge for a lot of people. So the first thing we focused on was bikes. We developed an earn a bike program where you can actually go to the makerspace uh, if you're 18 years or younger and by exception for adults uh, and actually create your own bike. This, this program is modeled after the hubs program. In fact, it is, I would say, you know, absolutely adopted from the hubs program and the hub helped us start it. For those of you who don't know, the hub of Detroit is a bike shop down the street on Cass. We also have fix a bike sessions where people actually just come in, fix their own bike. But then we're trying to go even further. So we're developing remote control car programs where you can actually build your own remote controlled car. And that remote controlled car actually is a scale model of a real car. So you learn about a lot of different systems like motors, speed controllers, suspension systems, chassis, and so forth. In addition to that, we actually hack things. So we hack wheelchairs into go-karts and we hope to scale up to actually, you know, fiddling around with actual automobiles, be it gas or electric. Electricity and energy, this is one of my personal favorites, but this is where we're doing things like soldering, hacking, taking things apart to learn more about them. Also learning about alternative energy like solar cells and wind turbines and how they work, which you know uncovers some of the principles of like electro or principles of electricity like electromagnetic induction and electromagnetism. And also doing things that are more fun like building amplifiers and synthesizers and the, and the like. Communication is where we do things mostly related to computers, wireless networks, and also social media, so audio video production and social media. But, uh, and here is actually our Earn a Computer program, modeled much like our bike program. We can go in, we have old computers that we refurbish together, helping people learn more about their computers. I find actually that a lot of people have computers in Detroit, uh, despite the digital divide, but they don't know how to fix them or get the viruses off them. So oftentimes they don't, they're not as powerful tools as they could be. And we're also working with a group called the Digital Justice Coalition um, through Allied Media Project to develop more mesh networks in Detroit. And for those of you who don't know what a mesh wireless network is, it's sort of an ad hoc community-based network where maybe one home has uh, the main internet connection and that's kind of shared throughout a neighborhood by multiple nodes that multiple houses might have. And that's a very resilient network. So in case you know the main network goes down, you can still talk to your neighbors through that network, kind of like you might in an office. In wearables, wearables involves uh, screen printing currently. Um, anything that you're wearing, it could be knitting, it could be sewing. And one thing I'd like to highlight here is these are two people that are part of our makerspace, Miss O'Yean on your right, and a guy named Fame, uh, Clement Brown, who's from Brightmoor. And Miss O'Yean is one of our assistant mentors, so she leads the wearables program and she's local. But this gentleman, uh, Fame, he's actually from Brightmore and we call him a mentor because he's got deep skill and expertise in screen printing and he teaches Miss O'Yean more about screen printing than she knew before, both the entrepreneurial side and the craft side. Miss O'Yean is a very skilled uh, seamstress, she's a very skilled artist, she does a lot of different things, but she's not skilled in the entrepreneurial component of screen printing nor the craft component. So partnering people together to learn these things is, what, you know, we do that with adults, we also do it with youth, and we try to do it with people that we find in the local neighborhood. And that's, that's what we prioritize, but oftentimes you can't find people in the neighborhood that have a certain skill set, so you look you know, as close as possible around. Design fabrication, we have a great wood shop. Uh, we're still working on getting more people involved in that. But we do things like you know fixing and making small furniture, birdhouses, but this also involves playing with our 3D printer, sketching, drawing, learning CAD and CAM software. Food and wellness, this is actually a very important thing because I learned that a lot of times youth were eating things that were really not helping their brains learn very readily. So we wanna make sure that we're teaching them how to cook food, how to grow food, and um, even how to sell food. This is actually the Detroit Food Academy. 
um, that came to the Mount Malia uh, Makerspace to offer their program, which is a program around nutrition, cooking, and entrepreneurship. And I'm very proud to say that the gentleman on the left, um, he actually now works at uh, the, what is it, Detroit Institute of Bagels. So through the networks, um, through the Mount Elite Makerspace Network and through the Food Lab Network, and also through the Green Garage, through various networks, we, he was able to prove himself um, you know, worthy of work and prove that he's really talented and now he's got a full-time job. So we, you know, we're not trying to like necessarily like say, oh, we're, we're giving you job skills. But if we can work through our networks and find out that you're ready for something, we want to hook you up into opportunities whenever we can. And that's adults or youth, but our makerspace is youth focused, so we are looking generally to uh, leveraging opportunities for youth. And music and art, of course, um, this involves anything from music production to theatrical production to painting, drawing, and whatever else you can possibly think of. This young gentleman is actually using GarageBand. We have GarageBand and all of our Apple computers, which is really amazing because you can, for, with most kids, you can say, here's GarageBand. There are tutorials online, and they immediately just grab onto it and make stuff. We actually have one kid, uh, the kid in the video with the braids, whose name is Dwight, and he actually learned GarageBand a couple years ago, started making music, and then he somehow got a gig at Amateur Night at, at the Hard Rock Cafe and won $5,000 for a school because he won first prize. So I think that illustrates what can happen if you're offering young people or older people or anybody access to the tools and knowledge to leverage their creative potential. I mean, I would say that's an exceptional case, but I'm hoping to make those cases less and less exceptional as time goes on. So we offer these con concentrations as entry points for mentors, makers, volunteers, and investors. Supporting makerspaces right now is a challenge. Right now, a lot of them are largely foundation or company supported. Uh, we haven't found a way yet to go beyond that, though we're definitely looking to it. But as you can see, each one of those involves uh, multiple mentors. So we're trying to build resilient networks of people with skills and talent in that concentration so that if somebody leaves or somebody moves on or if somebody gets a job, somebody's behind them to kind of you know, fill their spot as a mentor, assistant mentor, maker, or whatever. And hopefully there are investors supporting that. One example might be for transportation. <clears throat> A company like Ford, the Motor Company Fund, might be interested in investing in our remote control, controlled car program. Because what does that do? That develops talent in youth, and that talent may, be, may well serve the auto industry or certain industries in the future, because that kid has played with springs and chassis and motors and gears and all these other things that are involved in cars at a very early age. I, mean, I think the world is rife with stories of inventors and engineers who are playing with things at a young age. So how can we create these environments for young people to tinker and play and learn and particularly learn from each other? <clears throat> so why do we do this? For me, I consider why we do this, at least in, in, a, in a main way, about survival skills. You know, we can call them 21st century skills, and I've lately been calling them life skills, and only recently I'm like, no, they're kind of like survival skills. So when you start, I'm gonna go through these a little bit, but creativity, I think we all know what creativity is, but creativity is bringing an idea into the world that wasn't there before, creating something from nothing. So instilling this idea that you can be creative and you are creative, you are born with creativity, and, and trying to unlock that as soon as possible and progressively over time is very important. Complex problem solving, intelligent trial and error, trying something, it doesn't work, try something else, it doesn't work, keep trying. Self and community reliance, to me that's very important because that involves supporting yourself, supporting your community, and also relying on yourself to find answers. I think that's probably one of the most powerful things we can teach young people is, hey, you can figure it out, the answer's out there, just Google it. You know, like when a lot of us were young, if you're older, our parents are like, oh, go look it up in the encyclopedia. It's like, well now, now you can go look it up in the Googleplex, and it, the answer's out there. But also the answers can be in people in your community, so trying to talk with both your friends, elders, other, anybody in your community to, that might have knowledge that you're seeking, tap into those people. Because the internet is fast, but in my experience, what's much faster is talking with people who are skilled. They, you know, oh no, don't do it this way, or don't look at that way. So you don't have to figure out how to best search Google, you just keep asking questions until you get the answer. Courage and persistence, that's the I can do this. You know, the mentality of I can do this, Sometimes I'm surprised how many people don't have that mentality or haven't been told you can do anything. 
you know, you can do anything. Once you make the decision that you want to do something and then you just go for it, I think that's probably the hardest part of most projects or, my, or ideas is committing to it and then being persistent, you know, being okay with failure, being like, I'm going to keep going until this thing works. Adaptability, when unknown things happen, you change, you change direction and you keep going. Leadership is obvious, it's important to lead, it's also important to collaborate and be part of a team. And then mentorship, sharing your knowledge with others, project management, and entrepreneurship. I think the last one is also really important. Somebody once asked me who was a potential funder, why, you know, why are you focusing on entrepreneurship? You know, people need jobs. Yeah, we know people need jobs, but if you teach somebody at as young an age as possible, even if it's through a lemonade stand, about exchange and how that works, because that's the world that we're in, they could potentially start their own business at some point, but also they'll be a better worker no matter where they work, because they will understand what it takes to run or to start a business or to sell things, and that actually is the nature of our life in this world. So I think it's important to have at least the basic understanding of those skills. And I think the most important thing is the love of self and the love of community and love of learning. So loving yourself is being good to yourself and, and believing in yourself. And love of your community is also caring for one another. This is really important and this is actually something that I found working in the basement of a church that was so important is we have this resilient network of people that are supporting each other, that are celebrating your success, but they're also getting after you if you're screwing up or, you know, I wouldn't say failing, but if you're doing something wrong, you get it from all angles in this church. And I think that's probably the most powerful thing that I've seen. But sometimes a young person, they might not be getting what they need at home in terms of support. Well, they get it at this place because there's so many supportive people around you. So we can't control what happens at home, but we can create an environment that stimulates the love of yourself and stimulates the love of your community. And without that, it's hard to make or do anything. But with that, you can be incredibly powerful. So our vision for the future is actually as many maker spaces in as many neighborhoods, as many communities as possible, not just in Detroit, not just in the country, but all over the world. And fortunately, you know, I certainly do what I can to help this happen, but this is happening all over the place. Maker spaces of all different nature are growing in schools, they're growing in libraries, they're growing in community centers. And it's, I think it's a really exciting time that we're in because the, this, this intersection of new technology that is really enabling more democratic modes of production like 3D printers where you can actually make a product in your house or the internet where the knowledge is available anywhere. I mean, you want to teach young people how to get, gain access to and operate these tools so that they can, be, they can have greater agency in the world and be participants in all of the great things that are happening. And I would say the second vision, in addition to makerspaces all over the world, is also transforming the idea of a school and making schools and makerspaces actually be indistinguishable from each other. So yeah, I'd love to put makerspaces in schools, but even better, I would like schools and makerspaces to not be any different. And I think that's kind of the challenge that we have for schools now. It's like, I'm going to school, I'm gonna go learn math. You know, but what if you're actually building a go-kart and that gives you the reason to learn certain math, or that gives you the reason to learn certain sciences? For me, I was a tinker as a kid, but, and I looked at engineering school and it looked dreadful because there are all sorts of formulas in math and something. And I was like, ugh. But if it was done in a different way, if it came from a different approach, I learned most of the stuff in my basement and in my kitchen and my garage because I wanted to learn the math once I realized there was a reason to learn it. And a lot of the kids don't have that reason, so it's just drudgery. So I think there's a great potential to change that. So now I'd like to hand it off to Piper so she can talk about her makerspace. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So um, what does all of this have to do with 5E? So I'm going to first start off by saying that um, Everything that uh, Jeff just said, I'm gonna underline and then think about uh, the last statement that he said about having makerspaces everywhere. So Jeff and myself are part of a digital justice coalition, and you know, all the uh, work that uh, we've been doing in, uh, in terms of creating computer centers in the city and uh, you know, learning about privacy, blah, blah, blah. Through the years, uh, I've been begging Jeff, like I wanna, you know, do a makerspace, I want to do a makerspace. And um, 
you know, we, we continue to, you know, uh, just stay in touch. And uh, I went there and volunteered with, you know, the 5E. We went there and volunteered for the summer. And we would just constantly, you know, stay in contact. And uh, finally, uh, this summer, uh, Jeff was able to help us start our makerspace by helping us get a Cognizant grant. So uh, now we'll go into our explanation. So um, what you see here, the place where you are now is called the Cass Corridor Commons. And so the idea of the Commons is all of these uh, various businesses coming together to share space. And um, here in this space, this physical space where we are now, um, this is the D. Blair Theater and it's also the 5E Gallery. And 5E Gallery and D. Blair Theater are partnered <laughs> um, to bring you uh, music, entertainment, art, and that kind of thing. Um, I'll explain this slide. You see uh, the 5E Gallery and the Haru organization, which is uh, Bryce up there, partnered um, in 2011 through um, the Detroit Future Youth a portion of a BTOP grant, which was provided by the Digital Justice Coalition. And we passed the grant period, uh, have been collaborating and work together, and now we're a part of each other. And uh, our makerspace, because we're 5E, is dedicated to sound and music. And so that's uh, how all of this came about. Okay, I hope that's clear. So first slide, please. Okay. 5E Gallery is all the five elements of hip hop. I'm wearing my shirt. Yes, hey, I'm wearing my shirt. Okay. So all five elements of hip hop. What are the five elements of hip hop? You have the DJ. Next slide. The B boy. Next one. Graffiti. Next one. The MC. The next one. And you can stay here. And the knowledge, which is the fifth element. And that element is the culture. Right? So culture means many things, and for all intents and purposes in this lecture here, we'll talk about how we are working to create a maker culture here at our Sonic Maker space. And so um, what you see here is Rakim, he's one of our youth, and actually uh, he is uh, working uh, independently, and that is, really awesome because if you know uh, a lot of our youth uh i'm saying our like you know the land of like everyone that we love um in terms of learning right how do most of us learn like we go to school you get an assignment and then uh it's due like a certain day you may or may not do it and like jeff said like what does that have to do with uh my life or why should i care about that right so here at the uh, Sonic Makerspace, because uh, youth are making music and because they're very um, excited about their own personal projects, they're motivated to then go and push themselves to learn how to do stuff like soldering or figure out how to make something work because they need to know how to make it work, right? So I'll go to the next slide. Okay, what do we do here in our Sonic uh, Makerspace? So, 5E Gallery is the five elements of hip hop. And so we collaborated with the Haru organization and we created our youth program, which was based on music production, video production and performance and uh, all these wonderful uh, various forms of art. And so um, in talking to Jeff and really working to formulate what our makerspace would be, we um, really wanted to have a space that would incorporate from all the way from uh, low tech to high tech. And so we had already um, started working in GarageBand. We'd already started, a lot of the youth work in their various um, free software. Um, a lot of them are familiar with like Fruity Loops or something to that level. And so when, um, between the 2011 uh, piece and, and starting our makerspace this summer, um, youth had been working primarily in like the free GarageBand software, um, thinking about how to um, uh, put songs together, uh, basic music production, um, also um, uh, analog, right? So like um, drumming or rhythm patterns and uh, rapping, uh, analyzing lyrics and uh, you know media deconstruction and that kind of thing. So um, 
through the Makerspace this summer, we were able to take the music production and then move it into a space where they can then start to create their own sounds, right? So go to the next slide. So this right here is a, is a, is a machine. This is actually called The Machine. And then you'll see, oh no, that's not it. This is the Beat Thang. That's actually the name of it, Beat Thang. And uh, if you see in the corner there, that's uh, a machine. It's uh, by a company called The Machine. A lot of producers, if you guys know like Jeremy Ellis and all these guys, um, they make beats live, right? And it's like drum pads. And this is a more simpler version of the, uh, the machine. And so it's like drum pads, like, you know, um, you can program sounds into the drum pads and then you can create um, other sounds out of sounds, right? So you can uh, take pieces of music that you find or create and then you program them into this machine and then um, uh, chop them up and you can use these knobs and all these buttons to create various sounds. But um, this is manufactured by a company Right, which is awesome, and so is the other one, and so are many of the other machines that the youth use. So in terms of um, uh, ha having an understanding of how uh, these sounds got programmed into the machine and how um, they're able to uh, take those sounds and then manipulate them, that's the piece of the makerspace um, that if you click the next slide, I think, Oh no, okay. So I'll just, I'll just start here. But that's the part of the makerspace that helps um, youth understand there's a, you know, a company that has taken this technology and they're able to uh, provide you with uh, this prepackaged you know, machine and then you take the machine and then you manipulate it, right? So here at the makerspace, they go all the way down to something called an Arduino and the Arduino is actually like the brain, right? So then they're able to program into the brain, so all the way to its basic level, and I'll show you. But um, just briefly, I wanted to um, highlight that this young man here, um, Des, had been working in our youth program and uh, doing music production, making beats, and working on his own. And so um, one of the major uh, components in terms of like, building our maker culture is the peer-to-peer -peer learning, right? So the ones who come in and they're able to learn um, the certain skills and they get to a certain level, then they're able to share some of their more basic skills with the next level, right? So um, this summer in our youth program, it was so awesome, we were able to um, provide jobs, if you will, for our older youth to be able to be youth leaders. And those youth leaders then uh, would uh, consult with Bryce or the other uh, mentors in the space and then take that knowledge and then disseminate it and, and help to have the younger people be able to connect with it. Because some of it is super technical and can be super boring. You know, like if you <laughs> it's not fun, bells and whistles, right? It's like, uh, okay. But, uh, you know, young people that are younger and more fun than us have a way to help even younger people uh, connect with that information. So next slide, please. So this was our summer uh, camp, and this is all of our youth having fun at the table. What they're doing right now is um, they're working on their robots as a group. And um, this was really awesome because what would happen is during the summer, um, some youth would kind of take to certain things more than others. So some are really good at soldering and then some are really good at like figuring out like what a final use of something would be. And um, they're just, everyone is basically at a kind of a, I don't wanna say different level, but let's say it has a different understanding, right? And so what, um, what they were able to do is, you know, very casually too, it's not, I, I have to um, underline that the way that we're building culture, it's not like a classroom, right? So a lot of times people are like, oh, what's this class or that class? It's not like a classroom, it's not like there's a teacher and then like it's a one-way like 
take this information and do with it. it there's an understanding and an agreement between the, uh, let's call it maker leader, uh, becoming one with the group, right? And so it, there's a lot of discovery that's taking place and there's a lot of vulnerability, right? Because as Jeff mentioned earlier, that you have to go into this vulnerable space of like, I don't know. And a lot of when we're building this, um, this maker culture is I don't know. And that can be very scary and vulnerable, especially when uh, you wanna just make a beat. <laughs> Or especially when you know you just want to have uh, some fun, right? So how do we get um, people in general, not just our youth, but how do we get people to step into that space of courage of saying, you know what, it's okay that I don't know, and um, I'm going to try. And especially with a lot of us with technology, sometimes it can become scary. Like, do you guys get scared sometimes? Like, has anyone ever like? Got, uh, gone and then like it was working and then you went there and you like need it like whatever it is and then you went there and you're like it's not working and I need it at two o'clock and you can't figure it out right like that's super scary isn't it like you have something to do like you know, for work or for whatever well what we are working to do is have everyone be more comfortable with that space that I don't know space because that's the space where you're gonna live <laughs> primarily in the maker space. You're gonna live in the I don't know. And, and so that's where you wanna live. You wanna live right there and be like, I feel good, I feel good, I don't know, I'm learning. And I don't know about this, oh, I don't know about that. I'm gonna try that, right? Because soldering's scary, because it smells like, oh, it's burning, right? And, uh, right, right? Like, and, uh, you know, uh, I'll just tell you one, one quick antidote. We had uh, James here, so awesome, and the first day, that he came, he was teaching about the various metals and uh, uh, metals of, that are conductors of um, energy to get um, the magnetic charge. Anyway, I won't go that deep. But so, um, you know, we're, we're going through the different metals and he brought these copper nails and some wire. And so he's asking the youth, like, you know, uh, we're, we're, we were uh, doing a concept around uh, making an amplifier, you know, hook up to a battery and then using the magnetic field to make the sound, uh, you know, louder or whatever. So one of our youth, which was the young man that was actually soldering earlier, um, you know, it's, it, it's really a self-discovery. It's not like an assignment, like, do this, do this, do this. It's like, here's a bunch of information and let's see if, uh, let's see what happens, you know? And so uh, the young man is like, well, I, what if I take two copper wires and wrap them around the, uh, the, the, the nail? And we're like, okay, yeah, what happens? And then like we start smelling smoke and it like starts burning. And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And we're like, that's awesome, you know? <laughs> and so like, that's, that's just an antidote to give you an understanding of like, that's cool, right? Like everyone's like, oh wow, like we're burning stuff up. And okay, now we know, like, put, so we're like, how do we fix it? Or maybe less battery, or maybe less wire, or, right? So anyway, okay, so next slide. This is the, um, it's, this is the basic um, LED lesson. This is where we start. So this is a breadboard. Uh, this here's a breadboard, and that is the Arduino, which is the brain. And so, um, and this of course is a nine volt battery. Um, and so basically this is the, uh, where we start. And uh, what happens is the youth learn how um, to, all the way, like I said, create power, if you will, through the analog, right? Like not technology, like just how is power created, right? And, and what does magnetism have to do with any of this and what kind of metals or conductors? And we start there and then, we quickly get into this, and this is real basic. It looks, how many people are afraid of this right now? Does this look like it's gonna come get you? It's not. Actually, this is the brain. This is super basic, right? Um, that little light uh, comes on. You could put lights in there in any of these circuits and uh, program into, you can program anything, right? It's a brain. So you program anything into that Arduino. And whatever you put in there, then it's gonna talk to whatever the other piece is. So right now it's talking to this light, right? Because that's in the breadboard. And so once youth see, ah, I can make light come on, then it's like, what else can I do, right? Okay, next slide, please. 
uh oh, he's gonna come get you. No, just kidding. So um, this is one of our robots. So we go all the way from LED, and don't be intimidated. I know, this guy, he looks cool too, doesn't he? He's like, he's looking really good. Now this is, uh, we're, what is this? Uh, we're January, what's today, the 9th? Um, that breadboard picture was June, uh, maybe like mid-June. Was, the, was that LED breadboard picture. This picture is, I think, mid-December, right? So that just gives you an idea, right? So this guy right here uh, and his little buddy, his buddy doesn't have, uh, his, his poor buddy, he doesn't have a head yet, it's okay. But this guy right here, um, he goes all over the place, right? So he, he, he goes everywhere, they, they got him going. And, and right now he's just driving. They could put music into him, they could put lights on him. Uh, you know, they, they, they have fun with him. Uh, what two lessons that they're doing right now is, um, one is this kind of like uh, indicator because we kept having issues, <laughs> of course. They're, they're not toys, but uh, they, they seem like toys. But we kept having issues with, um, you know, of course, dropping, right? And, uh, you know, but so we put a little indicator, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, so when it, so when, can you see the whiskers? Oh, he doesn't have his whiskers on, but um, uh, you, they're kind of blurry. You can see the whiskers in the end. But uh, now they're creating these indicators so that, like, the whiskers can kind of detect, like, uh oh, I'm to the line, so let me not go off the table. Let me go to the, you know, so that's where we are with that. There's another project that, um, that they're doing. This is a great project uh, where they have, uh, they're working on an alarm and you can put it in your pocketbook and then when someone gets too close to the pocketbook, it starts to go off. So that's the other thing too is, you know, um, James is really awesome. Uh, we share James too. Uh, and James also is at the library as well. So, um, James. So, uh, so James is really awesome because what James does is like we'll meet and James will be like, you know what? Like there's you know these skills and these projects and the, and what he does is ask the youth, right? What do you guys want to do? What do you want to learn? And that's where really the power is because the youth will say, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And now we're creating our maker culture like we're finally creating our maker culture so from june to january it was like about six months so now the youth are coming in like you know what i want to do you know what i want to do so that's awesome so we'll go to the next one so this is actually the robot they 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 have to program the robot and it goes into that's the program uh the arduino program so basically it's a language Arduino is a language, and um, they can they can do music. They can we can find music like existing music and program it into uh, the brain, which is this is this is actually the Arduino brain, and then this here is like this whole robot thing. But you can see the brain on top, right? Here's another one that uh, they're working on, and so like you see the breadboard on top there, and you can put the LED up there, and see he's got a few LEDs up there, and. Um, I'm not sure if he's in the music program right now, but like you can, you know, put music into them. They can make music. You can make them move. You can make them, you know, understand whatever you want to put in there. You can put. So um, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, this is a really cool story. I'll try to be brief. This is Ethan. We also share Ethan. So Ethan is a great example of collaboration. Ethan uh, was at Mount Elliott Makerspace, and that's where we'll say that. Uh, that's where he trained, right? And so now Ethan is one of our youth, and he works uh, with us and with James. And um, he actually is like, I would say maybe in the land of like comparisons, like the most advanced, right, of the youth, because he's been doing this a long time, right? And even though he's only 12 or I think 13, he is now our master, right? And so he teaches all the youth everything and he's their age so they listen to him which is awesome um so ethan had this broken core am i saying it right cord yeah uh synthesizer and he brought it one day like can we fix this and james was like okay let's try and so they opened it up and james was like oh cool because we had had all these like smaller chips 
right? You saw the, the smaller chips and things, and this one had like two huge chips, and they could see like the circuit board and where everything was, and it was from the manufacturer. So James went in and showed them like all the components, how it's organized, it looked like a little city, and they were so fascinated. And uh, you can see over here our illustrious uh, Spielberg in training, uh, you know, capturing everything on our wonderful flip cams. And that's another thing we do is we document everything, everything, everything. So um, it was really wonderful because they're just kind of trying to figure out what it is. And this took, like, they're, you know, they're, it, it usurped maybe like a couple weeks. Just really trying to figure, figure it out. Now, the moral to the story, we never fixed it. <laughs> And we don't know why, and that's okay. <laughs> but but they learned a lot, right? Just from that experience, um, and it kind of like molded and gelded us together as a family because we, it was like such a this you know task that we were trying to do. So the next slide, okay, practical application. So now this is Ethan, of course, with our wonderful shirt on, and what he's done. This is a smaller chip, and he was like. Every time I go out and I have my phone, like how many people go out and you have your phone and you're like, oh, my battery, my battery's dead, like I can't make a call. So Ethan's like, I'm tired of having to like plug in my phone, everybody go. So he created a USB charger that charges on battery, right? So that's, that's, a, that's something practical. But like I said, he's our master, right? So um, what's wonderful is going all the way from uh, working with Jeff and learning basic things uh, maybe like a year and a half ago, maybe something like that, to now he's like, you know what I need? And then making it, and then he didn't, what did he have to buy? Like we, we, we bought like each one of these components, which is like a dollar, or like pennies, and we have those rechargeable, rechargeable batteries. Okay, I'll wrap it up. So, and this is my last slide, actually. So um, that's pretty much what it is. And just my last slide, one more time, the next. So just, uh, uh, you know, to sum up, so, that is the 5e sonic 5e haru biz sonic makerspace so it's all about music and electronics and community and um, art and fabulousness and exploration and it all came because of our collaboration with jeff sturgis who even introduced us to the idea of making so that's it <laughs>